Hello everyone. Hello. Um, can we start with Paul McTaggart, please? Hello, Paul. How are you? Not bad, you? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. Ah, uh, thank you very much. It's been an uh, enjoyable 14 years, that's for sure. My question is about leadership. Um, you've obviously been so successful as a Celtic captain, but what I want to know is, in your opinion, what strengths do you need to be the captain of this club and, and who do you see those strengths from in the current squad? I think you've got to be very strong-willed, especially nowadays as well with social media and everything that's out there because let's be honest social media is not exactly the nicest place in the world after you get a defeat so I think that's one of the things that you've got to make sure that you create a good environment in the change room we're all together you socialize together you go for meals you're touch tight to each other as well as uh, on the field as well as off the field and I think that's the biggest one and you've also got to be working around good people and that comes from recruitment as well and they bring in good people into the change room, into our environment, and they've all got to not bide by our rules, but make sure they uh, join in, whether it's team meals, whether it's working hard and training. And it's just, it's the standard that everybody sets, and it's been set here for such a long time. And I had Stephen McManus as a captain beforehand, and he set that standard. Now, then it was up to me to go make sure I continue to set that standard, whether it was in training or about the building as well. And We've got people like James Forrest and Callum McGregor that are ready to do that. They, they help me so much right now as well. And we've had people like Lustig and even Glenn Leuvens when I first started at Celtic being captain. He was a huge help to myself as well. Can we have Scott McCrory, please? Hey, Scotty boy, how are you doing? I am fantastic, Scott, yourself. You're looking well, my man. Um, I've had a couple of occasions. I've obviously had the one going to Australia. Um, I sat down, spoke to the team in Australia, and I just realised it wasn't for me. I sat with Peter, and uh, he was fantastic at the time, and so was Brendan as well. Brendan gave me the opportunity to go and explore a couple of different options and areas as well. I had the chance to go to Newcastle when Neil Lennon was the manager. My contract was running out, and... The gaffer spoke to us and spoke very highly of what he wanted me to do, how he wanted me to be about the place and how he wanted me to continue being captain when he was a manager. So uh, I had the, a couple of little sniffs, but we obviously had the, the chance to go to Tottenham Hotspurs as well when Harry Redknapp was there. He spoke about it a couple of times as well. It was my second season in the Celtic and it was just one of those ones I was just starting to enjoy the club, starting to really get to know what, what it was expected, what the standards was to hit week in, week out, and Gordon was the manager, and I was learning a lot from myself, so I was really enjoying my football at the time, and I didn't see that being a great move for myself at the time, so no, I've had a, I've had a couple of opportunities, and then there's the Aberdeen one that I obviously taken the, the opportunity to go, but it's a different situation, and it's different timing, and though I, I think... Looking back at, at my time, this is the perfect time for me to be moving clubs. I'm going to be 36 in the summer. I've got the opportunity to go in as be an assistant coach to work with a manager that's also a friend as well, and, uh, but also play football as well, which I feel like I can play another season or two, and that, that's what I wanted to do. And The other times when I was maybe going to go to Australia or Newcastle or Tottenham back at the time, I didn't see that as the right move at the right time for myself and the family as well. So um, I think this, this ticks all the boxes. Thanks for the question. Cheers, my man. Hamish, please. Hi, Scott. It's Hamish from 67 Hill Hill. Um, again, I just wanted to put forward my thanks on behalf of 67 Hill Hill personally as well. You've, you've given me some 
<laughs> Thank you very much. Um, it's a hard one to be fair. I think it's you've got to deal with the lows very well. You've always got to believe in your teammates as well. You know, the one good thing about Celtic is there's a game every three or four days, so it's that bounce back mentality that we've got. And as long as everybody's together, you've got to believe in each other. You've got the willingness to to run through walls for each other. And all, as I say before, you've got to be touch tight together as a team. For uh, we've won nine. Uh, trophies in a row and it was incredible because we, we worked so hard together and that was individually and collectively as well so I think it's those things that you've got to try and bring everybody together which we've got people in that dressing room that, that want to be a huge part of this club and that want to push the club forward and that's what you want, you want people to stay at this club for a long time and understand what, what a great club it is because as I say I've had the opportunities to move before but I never wanted to leave because the fans, the stadium and to be around the teammates as well and the managers that I've had and that I've learned underneath has been exceptional. Thank you. Um, we've got a different James Forrest. Hey Jimsy, come on pal, how are you looking? Uh, yeah, You've no change my man. I was going to say you've lost a bit, your barnet's looking better as well, but uh, each their own. Uh, first of all, mate, I want to say uh, I want to echo everything else you've said, but I want to say thank you for coming on the podcast. Um, I know it's not the first time you've been on the podcast, but you had a bit of a slow start at St. Celtic. Um, Cheers. Good start. The day that I, the day that I remember, the day, the day <laughs> no, that day was very good, but I think the first four years I, I really enjoyed. Uh, second year I got player of the year Scotland, best player in Scotland, but obviously for your opinion, that, I, I, sh I shouldn't have got that one. But we'll not worry about that. No, I think that, that day was, it was exceptional. It was one of those ones, got a man sent off early, then we've got to dig deep and... Uh, Lenny was the manager and he had full belief in the lads and he understood it was going to be hard we weren't going to have as much as the ball as possible but um, he believed that if we can sneak a draw we can take them back to Celtic Park and that we could play, beat them in the next round uh, sorry, in the, re in the replay which we managed to do but no, it was it was a great occasion because I think the middle of the park was me and Key and then somehow I get, ends up getting drafted out to right mid because we got a man sent off so it was me and Mark Wilson and while I was doing overlaps I was doing underlaps and we were working it as hard as we possibly could because we knew how much it meant to us as well to try and dig deep and to try and get through in this round and to be perfectly honest well, as I say I keep saying I don't know what Willow was doing that high up the park at that time because he's went that high up the park I'm playing right mid I'm somehow at the edge of the box so if we've lost that ball we're in danger of counter-attack and it's those things when you're a little bit younger that you're maybe a little bit naive about, that you you push on a little bit and you believe in each other and you think that you're, you're going to score and you're going to create chances. And then now I'm probably thinking, would I be that far up the park if I lost the ball? I've got a 70-yard sprint back and they've got an extra man in the park. So, no, it's just it's different ways that you, that you understand the game and you learn. And, but that occasion, it was extremely special because somehow Willow got the ball, chopped it back to myself and... I opened up my body on my left foot and managed to put it in the faraway corner. And it was brilliant with the fans behind the goal and when we used to get the full uh, side as well. It was exceptional and 
the fans that day it was great because we knew that we had to dig deep and there was still a little bit uh, time to go but we managed to hold on and be strong and it's those days that, that make and break teams and that, that, that was one of those occasions that, that made us. Joe McHugh. <laughs> so we've while ago now. I was a young fit lad running up and down the line. Okay, it's Ah, thank you. Thanks, James. We're going to Joe McHugh, please. Joe, are you hiding from me? <laughs> right, we'll come back to Joe. Um, Natasha. Hello. That's a great question. I think right at the start, I think I'm going to have to say Paul Hartley. We had a kind of love-hate relationship when he was at Hearts and I was at Hibs and we obviously came together in Scotland. We met up a few times, we got on really well, but as soon as we went in that park, we, we pretty much fought, fought like cat and dog. But as soon as we came into a changing room, we had a great bond and to this day I still speak to him all the time, uh, ask for advice. I, and to be fair, he's a manager now, so I'm always willing to learn. But he was huge in the dressing room at the time, and the two of us were in the same position. And whether I was playing centre midfield or he was playing centre midfield, we'd always look out for each other. But he would also give you that little bit of respect and sit you down and say what you could have done better and how how we could have worked together as a team. And I think it's that. It's sometimes somebody puts a, an arm around you that you don't expect. And I also had that with Neil Lennon as well when I. Uh, First came to the club, and me and Lenny used to fight as well. And so many pictures of two of us standing face to face and arguing. We used to both players just want to win. You do whatever you can to win the game. And it was the first day when Neil uh, when Neil was leaving, and I'd signed, and I was sitting in the manager's room just waiting on the Gordon coming down with Peter. And Lenny walks in, and I'm thinking this is my worst nightmare at this moment in time. And we sat down, we ended up having a conversation for half an hour, 40 minutes, and he told me his love for the club and how fantastic the club is and how special it's going to be. And he's sad that he's leaving. And I'm starting to understand it now because it's me that's leaving and I'm the, the guy that's slightly older and I'm talking to the younger lads. And I'm, I'm sure they're probably not taking much of it in at the moment because they're just living the dream that they are and playing football and enjoying it, whereas... I've had that, I've experienced it and loved every single moment of it and now it's coming to their end and you've just got to try and enjoy it as much as you possibly can. Hi, the Celtic Exchange, please. Thank you. Hi, Scott, it's Taylor here from the Celtic Exchange. So I just echo what the rest of the guys have said, thanks for such a important and successful four years and also good luck to you and your family with the next chapter. Thank you. Um, Scott, you've got to see an inner drive and a really strong message side to your game. I just want to ask, it's just something that came naturally. Um, if you ask everybody, um, loud, I'm, I'm lively about the training ground. I enjoy a laugh and I enjoy a joke as well. Um, I pretty much still think I'm 17 year old, to be perfectly honest. But as soon as I go into training, as soon as I cross the line into a match, it's like 100%. And it was just drilled into me throughout my footballing career, as soon as you go out on that pitch, you work hard. And I had some fantastic coaches when I was coming through at Hibs and they drilled that into me early doors. And they say, you can have a laugh and joke about here, but as soon as you cross that line, that's it, it's switched on. And it's always been in the back of my head. And to be perfectly, it's, it's worked well for myself. And it's just that mentality thing that as soon as you go over there, I know I want to win the game. I want to get the better of my opponent. So no matter what it takes, I need to make sure that 
I know what I'm doing for set plays. I know where I am for corners, where I should be, where, who I should be marking as well. So it's all just ticking over and making sure that you know what you need to know before you go out and whatever the manager is or Kendall tells you just before. And sometimes there's slight tweaks and stuff like that, that or the formation or how we're going to press. And it's just remembering that and make sure that not just myself, but everybody else knows their job as well. And I think the game's getting more and more professional and the game's getting more tactically based now and you, you need to understand that side of the game. So you have to make sure they're switched on and you're aware of that now. Thank you. Anthony Whitelaw. Hi, Scott. How are you doing? Hello. Uh, good to see you again. Thanks very much for the last one. Tell me you're no driving. No, no, I'm no. <laughs> <laughs> I've got practice in the house to do this. Quite right. <laughs> just to say, thanks very much. Last four games especially, it was incredible. Uh, do you think you're now getting into a big rebuild, of course? Um, you've been part of them before when Rodgers came in. Um, we had a bit of a shaky end to that season and we bounced back and won an invincible treble. How does Celtic bounce back in any next year? Because obviously the aim has to be to win the league back immediately. Yeah, well, they've got new CEO. They've got they'll have a new captain coming in. They'll have a new manager or John will be in charge, and it'll be a fresh start because there's a lot of players in loan. There's a lot of players leaving the club and coming and going. So it, it's it's a hard thing to accept as a Celtic fan, but the club's in good stead. We've got Dominic coming in, who's got a great vision of the future for Celtic, how we can rebuild, how we can go forward. We've got great young players coming through as well, as you've seen yesterday coming on the, from the bench and. Uh, starting as well so no the future's bright for Celtic it's it, it's going to be hard work but there's everybody in here they're all working for the same goal and it's to get the best 11 that we possibly can on the park and the best young players coming through at the club as well because we want to bring the young players through we've got a great academy all the way through and there's no point having Lennox Town if we're not going to use it properly and you, you're starting to see that now with people like Kieran, Callum, Jamesy all done that in the first team now we're starting to see other ones coming through now so it's great that we've got that youth, youth coming through into the first team to to push the first team lads as well and to understand that once you make that step for the under 20s or the under 18s and how big a step it is you become a man overnight and you need to take those responsibilities on and you have to push forward but they're also living the dream as well to play in front of 60,000 fans once we eventually get fans back to the stadium. So it's it's those things that will will be in a great great way in the next season, and I'm sure the club will push everyone to as far as they possibly can. So we're all going in the the same direction. Thank you, my man. Thank you. David Folds. Hello, David. Thanks first of all, and particular for. Just win games. Just become a winner. That's what Celtic's all about. This club wants to win games, we'll win championships, we'll win trebles, quadruple trebles. Uh, that's part and parcel. And I think there's a lot of people that want to knock you down when you're at the top. And This club's been at the top for so long and there's a lot of people obviously hurting a lot. But the club's been in a great position for the last nine years when we've won nine in a row then there's always going to be people out there and it doesn't help with social media as well there's a lot of people out there that are keyboard warriors that wouldn't say anything to you if they were standing in front of you so it's not too much for myself to worry about I go out there I enjoy football I play with a smile on my face we win the game I'm delighted we lose the game I'm a bit of a nightmare but it's part and parcel of being at Celtic you want to win games you want to win trophies and that's what you have to do thank you Erin Boyle. Hi, Scott. Erin uh, Boyle, more than 90 minutes. Were you singing yesterday? Singing? No, I was... Uh, a poem. Poem. 
Yes, I've seen it. Would you like it? Yes, much appreciated. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Scotty. I appreciate that. Um, I'm going to try to say a big thank you from the Modern Insight team and also from the Caden Foundation as well uh, for being a fantastic servant as a charity to the team. So thank you very much from both teams and also from 10,000 kids as well. So yeah, not a problem whatsoever. Um, I think it would probably be the double treble. I think because it's so important to them, they would have been able to do it. Yeah. Um, I think because everyone expected us to not go and do it again, and for the bunch of lads and how hard we worked, we done the first treble invincible. We went sixty nine games undefeated, and then we end up getting beat four nothing for Hearts. But I, I think the that game to go back into the air to to relive that would be incredible because the occasion getting on the bus coming back down London Road as well and seeing all the fans and uh, I've seen people jumping on top of police cars and police fans and celebrating with flags and everything and it was those occasions that I'm going to live with and I'm going to cherish for the rest of my life because it's those special memories and especially when so many people write you off saying you've done the treble that'll be you and then we go and we keep pushing and we keep pushing and you do double treble and then quadruple and it, it's just we keep pushing boundaries as, as far as we possibly could and that's what these lads wanted to do they've worked so hard over the years and I know we had a, a slight year off, but uh, it's been fantastic. It's been a great journey, and I've enjoyed every single moment of it. But I think that one would be the one that I'd love to go back just to sh to show everybody how well we've done and that we can do it again, and that they kept kept supporting us and kept having the faith in us as well. Thank you so much, Scott, and also don't, don't be shy. Uh, the team are ready, so we'd love to have you back. And <laughs> good luck, good luck. <laughs> Not a problem whatsoever. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. John Reid. I don't know if he's dropped off, Sharon. I don't see him. I think he was having problems connecting earlier. Um, let's go to 20 minute Tim's. Hello. Hi, Scott. How are you getting on? I am getting on very well yourself. He was very, very positive. His first day I met him, I met him in his own house. We sat down, we chatted, and he was like, can you be as honest as possible? How long do you think you can play? How fit are you? Can you get fitter? Do you think the team could get fitter? How can we get better? And we sat for a good couple of hours and we chatted through the whole situation. And he was like, no. He says, I see you. Everybody sees you as just an automatic a runner. You run about the game and everyone thinks you're fit and that's part and parcel of your game and that's it and they don't see the qualities that you've got with the ball and I was like oh no, nobody's ever really says that to me before so it's kind of taken back a little bit so I was, I was like all oh, right no problem so it was like pre-season come back work extremely hard and to be fair I spoke to Gordon Strachan a couple of months beforehand and he says go away work as hard as you possibly can show this new manager how fit you are how much you're willing to learn and you're willing to adapt your game as well so the manager comes in he's setting up shapes and stuff like that. In the first game, I end up playing left wing. And I'm thinking, he's, he's messing with the wrong guy here if he thinks I'm going to be doing step overs and Cruyff turns and whipping balls in. I know he's talking about adapting my game, but I've never been a tricky winger. So he was like, no, I'm just wanting to learn different shapes, different styles, and show you my philosophy on how we work and how we build up and the different shapes. So I'm totally fine. A couple of games down the line, Boom, centre midfield, hold the midfielder. I want you to do the arc and 
hold in there, just sit, pivot, get on the ball, keep it nice and simple. As soon as we lose it, good high tempo pressing up the park and make sure we're all squeezing together as a team. It was like, you're my captain, you're my voice on the park. So whatever I tell you and how we build up and how we work and train him, I want you to try and push onto that, that onto the lads. And it was like, I'm talking about your diet. I'm talking about how we look outside from inside that everyone came in the same training gear, we look smart, not anyone with headphones on, not earrings in and training and stuff like that. We all looked as sharp as we possibly can and look, it looked professional. And I, I think that's what he brought to this, this club and that's what he brought to myself. And he was like, ah, I know you used to like a, a night out now and then. He was like, it kind of stops until we start winning silverware. So my whole thing was, I'm stopping, we make sure we work extremely hard. We go in, diet's good, body fat's good, we're as fit as we've ever been and we're going to get beat for Gibraltar in the first game. So I'm thinking this has not went as well as it possibly can. So he was like, don't worry about that. One result, we'll build on it and we'll keep going. And from then he was so positive in the way we wanted to play. He was like, look, give the opportunity for the goalie to play from the back and if it's not on, we can dink it into the strikers. But I want you to play as much as possible, the build up, the, the shape, how hard we worked on in training, what we've done in training was just incredible and it, it pretty much changed not just my, my game but everybody else's game to a different level as well, fitness wise, the understanding of the game as well, it wasn't just turn up, you just go and play and that's you and hope for the best, it was properly tactically based on how we were going to outplay the team, how we were going to keep possession, we we're going to create more chances and how we got the overloads, whether it was on the left, right, throughout the centre and it was the build up and he would show us that based on watching videos, how we work at training, how we're going to play and then he used to go through the, the opponent's team individually, show us their strengths, their weaknesses and how we're going to press, whether it was right foot, left foot, two centre halves weren't great on the ball, just wanted to ping it long and it would be just all small details but it was very, very good and it was it was simple things as well that managed to win us the games as well just showing a centre half on his bad foot and Jamesy coming in from the right wing pressing him going back to the goalie always press the goalie and it was just that that we put teams under so much pressure high up the park that we didn't have to defend that much they gave us the ball back because they were scared to play so they ended up playing long it went back into our goalie or it went to our centre half so we were strong and physical that managed to win it for us so it was just adapting and, and learning a different probably side of the game from when Ronnie was in and also to be a lot fitter than what we were as well. Thank you very much. Can I go back to see if Joe McHugh is with us? Hopefully, yes. Yay. Yes, Joe, there you go. How are you doing, son? Nice picture. Can I believe you got a picture of Tom Roderick and no me on it? <laughs> It wasn't easy after the game. The lads obviously disappointed getting beat going to Gibraltar. But the manager was incredible. The manager was like, it's one leg. He was like, it's your first game underneath me. He was like, don't worry about that. We'll take them back to Celtic Park. We'll go. We'll score goals. We'll create chances. And I've got trust in you. I've seen you in training. I know how you've worked prepared to playing on an AstroTurf pitch that had holes in it. It was like pretty much playing on a, a car park, to be perfectly honest. But he was like, we'll go, we'll be fine. So the next game comes, we manage to win at home. And then it's just that build up of the manager sitting, talking to us, sending those positive vibes to us as well. And speaking to us like human beings as well. And even though he was a manager, he, you could always go and speak to him. And you could go and speak to him about what happened at the weekend. He would talk about football, he'd talk about everything in general, and ask the lads how they were. And it, I don't want to say he was a mate, but he was as close to a friend as you possibly can be without being a manager but then there was also that side that he could snap as well and he was on it so it, it was good to have every single thing that he could possibly do to help us whether it was better food whether it was better training better pitches 
he would always fight for us to get the best of the best and that, that's what Celtic is, we, we should be getting the best of the best because that's what we want to see. We've got a hybrid pitch because the manager wanted us to play football throughout the whole winter and it's managed to, to survive the winter in Scotland. So things like that, those small details that he managed to get to us and it shows that he was fighting off the field as much as we were fighting on the field for him. Thank you. Have we got John Reid back or is he still not here? He's not here, Kev. Okay, um, we're going to have to leave it there. Scott, have you got anything that you want to say before we go? I'd just like to thank you all very much for your support over the years. and I know this season was hard, but you've got to remember the good times. We've had nine fantastic seasons. We've had quadruple trebles and <laughs> there's not a lot of teams that are going to do that in their history. And I think you've got to make sure that you stick by these lads that are coming through and you've given them the opportunity and you support them through thick and thin like you have done with myself and the lads that have been here before. And that's what Celtic do. We stick by each other and we come back. We always win trophies and they always will do. And at the end of the day, I'm going to be extremely sad that I'm leaving, but I'm also going to be very emotional when I come back as well to see the fans at Celtic Park and I know it's going to be in a, an Aberdeen strip and it's going to be something different but no it's going to be a special occasion coming back into Celtic Park and seeing you all again and here's hoping I get to 90 minutes as well and I can wave to you and say bye at the end of the day because it's been sad that I couldn't say bye to you all. Thank you very much everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Much appreciated. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you.